certainly good to be back home and in the presence of the Lord uh, one more time. Uh, thank God for a safe, uh, safe passage uh, in and through um, Canada. And um, I was just uh, absolutely blessed by what I saw going on at home. <laughs> A uh, number of things that I saw uh, happening here, and, and just, just, just really, really blessed. Uh, it was a Sunday service with Brother Gene. Uh, the weekend before that, Brother uh, Smiley um, did a wonderful job, and then in the middle of the week, uh, Brother Quentin Jr. A man, just uh, his teaching, and as I was listening to him, uh, I said, "Brother, we got to keep going with your series that the Lord has given you." <laughs> And um, so, you know, tonight he'll be speaking for us. Amen. Uh, but before we would just have him uh, come, I want to uh, just sing a little song. And let's just uh, enter into an uh, atmosphere of worship. Amen. As we uh, just uh, prepare our hearts for the word of God. Amen. Through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus, and I've learned to trust in God, oh, through it all, oh, through it all, oh, I've learned to depend upon his word, oh, say through it all. Yes, through it all, oh, I've learned to trust in Jesus, oh, I've learned to trust in God, well, through it all, oh, through it all, oh, I've learned to depend upon his word. The first verse, do we have that? Oh, I've had many tears and sorrows. I had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. Oh, but in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come only to make me strong. Oh, through it all, yes, through it all, oh, I've learned. Yes, I've learned to trust in God. Oh, through it all. Yes, through it all. Oh, I've learned to depend upon his word. One more time. Oh, through it all. Say through it all. Yes, through it all, oh, I've learned to trust. Yes, I've learned, oh, through it all, hallelujah, through it all, oh, I've learned to depend upon his word. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just bow in a word of prayer. We want to give space to uh, precious brother just to come and share uh, from his heart to ours. Father, we thank you uh, for the opportunity to gather uh, once again in the house of God. Uh, we come, Lord, just uh, looking for you to minister to our hearts and to our needs. And uh, we know that Brother Quentin may have certain notes, but you know what the needs are. And God, we ask that you just uh, minister to the needs and help us, oh God, just to uh, uh, get our thoughts centered around you that you could speak to us tonight. Uh, trust, oh God, that you would just bless, amen, our gathering. Thank you, uh, many uh, that travel. Uh, to and fro and you allowed us to come together one more time 
And we're grateful for that, Father. So we ask, Lord, that you would just bless this gathering. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's just welcome, amen, Brother Quentin uh, Jr., amen, to the pulpit tonight. Um, I've learned, amen. And I know one of these times, Brother Quentin going to trick y'all. He's going to sing for y'all one of these times. I'm speaking that by faith. It's a prophecy. Amen. God bless you. Come on, brother. Amen. God bless you, church. Hope everyone's had a pretty good week. Uh, we will get right into our lesson for today. Uh, we're going to be continuing this uh, this series on the spiritual gifts of the church. So this will be a part two. Uh, and if we could turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 12, 1. We'll do a scripture reading before we do a prayer and uh, take our seats. And it reads, now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you, O Lord God. Lord, we know, O Lord, that only you, O Lord, can give us the interpretation of your words and the intentions behind it, O Lord God. Lord, there have been people through the years that have gone through seminary school from young to old, O Lord God, and haven't been able to get an ounce of your wisdom, O Lord God, and your revelation, O Lord God. But Lord, you, you decided before the foundation of the world, O Lord God, that there would be a group in Florida, O Lord God, and there would be peculiar people that you would pick out, O Lord Jesus Christ, that we may not be the smartest in the world, we may not be the greatest in the world, we may not have many riches, O Lord God, but Lord, you saw us and loved us, O Lord God. And because of that word of love that you spoke to us, O Lord God, you had to reveal yourself to us, O Lord God. You you had to pour your knowledge and your wisdom, O Lord, upon us, O Lord God, to help us to understand what your expectations of us in life are, O Lord God. In order for us to be healed, O Lord God, in order for us to be delivered, O God, Lord, the loved ones, O Lord, that are still lost in the world, O Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, we're praying to you, O Lord God, but Lord, I know you're revealing to us that we are the light for them, O Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we can only get this light as you reveal it to us, O Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you bless this little, uh, little lesson today, O oh Lord. Bless the people, O oh Lord God. Whatever needs that they have in their hearts and their soul, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you're the same Jesus Christ when you walked on the earth, O oh Lord God. You're the same Jesus Christ when you were in the prophet of this age, O oh Lord God. And, O oh Lord, we're so thankful that your spirit has not changed, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. It still wants to operate through the people, O oh Lord God. So whatever needs they have on their minds, their souls, their, their worries, O oh Lord God, if they can't even speak a word, let the worries reach you, O Lord God. Let the fears reach you, O Lord God. Let the stress reach you, O Lord God, and speak a word and minister over them, O Lord God. O Lord, we ask it, O Lord God, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may all have your seats now. Um, so, we're going to continue this uh, little topic on gifts. We'll, we'll uh, go a little bit more further into the gifts, a couple more gifts to... Um, kind of get a revelation of what these things are. And I love how Paul says uh, for us how he doesn't want us to be ignorant of how these gifts work, right? Because it's by revelation that you have to receive something. So anytime, anytime you want to receive something from God, you first have to have the revelation of what it is. Amen. And then you have to also have to have the faith to be able to use to uh, uh, receive that from God. Right. All right. And so in Matthew um, uh, 13, 15, I'll just read this real quick. It says, for these people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed. At least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted and I should heal them. And I'm so thankful that, you know, we believe the Bible, but not every verse is for us. Amen. Right. And so these people right here, uh, uh, of course, Christ is talking about how they don't have the understanding. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have the wisdom and the faith to be able to receive from God. So I love how Paul puts a little, uh, uh, um, a little verse in there for us. So we're not ignorant about how these things work so that we can understand how to get our healing, how to get our deliverance. Right. So we're going to uh, read 1 Corinthians 4 through 10. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 10, just to kind of go over the spiritual gifts once again. And it reads, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. 
but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to um, profit with all. Uh, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to, another's, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. So we have to expect that all these gifts are in the church. And the prophet said the local church. Because a lot of times Amen. people want to push these gifts off onto great men. Right. And we appreciate great men. Right. We appreciate ministries. Uh, I know Brother Wesco has a great gift of faith. And right. we know Brother Oral Roberts in the past had a great gift of faith. Yes. And we know a lot of these ministers out here have good, good gifts of faith. But a lot of us can't get to them. But that doesn't mean that God still can't reach you, which is why the prophet said he places all of these local gifts inside of the church right. so that you have access to God 100 percent of the time. Amen. Right. During the time of Jesus Christ, a lot of people couldn't access him because he was in one body. But when he died and split his spirit out among the people, he made himself more accessible so that there is. A, 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 and I like that. I like the uh, um, I like it because. Now we can access him, we can talk to him, we can commune from him, we can get something out of him at any time. And we don't have to uh, worry about, you know, going and getting a prayer card or going to meet so-and-so at their house. But we can pray, hey, Lord, I know that you have a, t a particular gift in this church now. And I would like to use this gift in order to, uh, to get a result, right? So what we're going to do, we're just going to recap what we learned uh, last week in regards to the gift of knowledge and wisdom. We'll just do this real quick. Uh, so the purpose of wisdom was to give instruction in order for you to have a lasting uh, uh, and to have lasting results for both spiritual and natural things. Right. So that's why when Jesus said, unless you eat of my flesh, um, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you won't have uh, life with me. And that life he was talking about was everlasting life. So it was wisdom to give instruction in order to receive everlasting life inside of your soul. Right. And then we also know of Solomon. Solomon used the gift of wisdom and also of discernment. And we see Solomon use the gift of wisdom in the situation. It's a popular story about how um, he used uh, the two mothers were fighting over the child. Uh, and Solomon used the gift of wisdom in a peculiar way, just like Christ had did. When he asked, he said, let me get the sword and I'll cut the child in half. One of the mothers, he could, uh, one of the mothers, he was using that wisdom to pull what was inside of the people out. And so one of the mothers said, okay, yeah, go ahead and cut it, cut it in half and I'll take one half. Now that was a representation of something that was not lasting. But then the other mother said, no, just give her the baby in order for it to, uh, in order for it to live. And then with that gift of wisdom that Solomon had, he was able to point out, okay, this is the true one right here. Right. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ did when he gave out his words of wisdom, because the unbelievers, when they heard that word, they walked away and they said, this man is crazy. Right. Then he went to his disciples and he said, will you also leave me? And Peter said a beautiful thing. He said, where else are we going to go? Thou has the words of life. Amen. So he accepted that wisdom and Christ was able to recognize who the true ones were. Right. So that's wisdom. And um, the purpose of knowledge is to allow us to get closer to God. That's the whole reason that we have knowledge. And we know that knowledge is not something um, you learn. Uh, Jesus told Peter when he had asked a question, he was trying to get something out of people. And he had asked them a question, which is uh, a question means you're trying to receive some kind of knowledge back. And Peter gave the right answer. And Christ was and Jesus Christ was able to perceive that flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my father, which in heaven had given has given you these things. And he gave Peter the keys to heaven. Right. So that knowledge that Peter had had given to God brought him closer to God. Right. So he got the keys to get closer to God. Right. And so these gifts are not used for personal gain. Uh, that's an important thing that we have to uh, understand. Even as we get more church, uh, more people in the church, because a lot of times people, that's why I say that's why Paul says I would not have you ignorant, because a lot of times you know, Gentiles come into church with their culture. Now they're gifted, but they come in their culture and the gifts start messing up the church. Wow. Right. Wow. Right. Uh, I'm a, I remember Brother Smiley uh, told me one time and I said this before. He said gifts can get you in trouble. And that's usually how it happens. That's usually how a church starts to break down is when there is not a, uh, an order of gifts. Right. right? And you start getting impersonations and all these things. And all of a sudden the church is in just in uh, distress, just like it was during the time with the children of Israel. Right. 
So gifts are not to be used for a personal gain and the gift of knowledge is not for you to walk around uh, acting like you know everything or, or even if you do know everything, it's not for you to be kind of puffed up in, uh, in your spirit um, because the problem with that and why knowledge is very, very important because Paul had received revelation and he also had a little issue he was going through and he was praying for God to take it away and God said, no, nah, I can't take this thing away because it'll puff you up because you're getting all this knowledge. So knowledge makes you feel and become God. And when you get around people that don't know and you begin to say what you begin to say, they can feel a lot more smaller. They start to feel more distant, uh, distance away from you because they don't know what you know. And, and, it's, and it's like you're putting yourself in the position of God uh, having dominion over the people. But God never wanted us to use that kind of use knowledge in that way, because when he came down, he came in a manger. Right. And he had his gift of knowledge was beyond just a gift of knowledge. And he had all knowledge, but he walked with the common people. He didn't wear the fancy clothes and all those things. Anyone could approach him. And he had the knowledge of all things inside of him. And so that's how God wants us to uh, be when we have our gifts is to be humble so that people can approach us and it can be used correctly. And we're not trying to get we don't have an agenda out of it where we're trying to get some kind of gain or a, a one up on a, a person. All right. So we're going to continue our journey now into um, the gifts. We're going to turn to First Chronicles 12 and read uh, verses nine through ten to go to our uh, go to the next gifts that are in the church. Oh, yeah. Corinthians. Sorry. Uh, and, it's, and it reads, uh, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the gift, um, to another the working of miracles. So we're going to talk about, um, so now these three, these three gifts, I've done, I've done my studying in the message and I found that they, they work pretty similar as far as a, as a result, uh, which is usually trying to get some kind of healing, right? So we're going to continue and start with uh, this gift of faith. So we all know that faith is a substance. It's evidence of something uh, you don't see it, but you believe that you have it. Right. Yeah. And all of us have faith. Every single one of us has faith. Right. right? If you are in the stature of the, uh, the perfect man, you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Faith is included in that. Yeah. So faith isn't something you learn about. Faith isn't something that you try to think up about it. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you have a measure of faith, right? That just that that just uh, uh, that should bring you some uh, uh, assurity yes. that you have the ability to access anything that you need from God, right? right? So um, um, we're going to turn to um, the message. Faith is the substance, and uh, it's a uh, forty-seven zero four one two in paragraph twenty. And we're going to see what the prophet has said about this. And I'll just start reading it while she pulls it up. It says, now here, now here not long ago, I'll give you a little story of someone who came to, someone who came so you can see what faith is. And I'm just going to read this little first part right here. Faith is a gift of itself. You may have a portion of it, but there is a gift of faith. And it's important to understand these things because a lot of times you can trip yourself up if you don't know how what what the difference is between your faith and a gift of faith right. and you can kind of get yourself in a situation where you believe, oh, I believe for my healing, but I'm not healed yet. And oh, I don't have faith. No, you've got faith. You right. just got to know how to operate it, which right. is why the, the Holy Spirit comes into the church to teach us these things so that we can receive from him and we don't doubt him. Praise right. Amen. So um, uh, we're going to continue on. Um, so Romans 12, uh, 3 reads, uh, and I'll just read this quickly. It says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. So number one, no, no matter whatever gift that you have, no matter whatever measure that you have, everything that has been given to you has been by the grace of God. And you can't be any bigger than yourself. You can't be any smaller. All right. So it says, but to think soberly according as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. So God has given you a measure of faith. Each one of us has a different measure of faith, right? And it can seem kind of peculiar when you're 
because when I was when I first became a Christian and you're reading these things, it can it can kind of seem kind of weird. Like, OK, I have faith. There's a gift of faith. Like, what do these things all mean? Right. Um, and it shows why we have to have knowledge of stuff in order to receive from God. So each of us has been given a measure of faith. Then also you have this uh, gift of faith. And I like to use an analogy to uh, describe how these things work. Right. So we all have different heights in the church. Right. Everyone. Some people are tall. Uh, some people are short. Right. Now, let's say there's a shelf that's eight feet in the air and you have a blessing up there with your name on it. Right. Your blessing is right there with your name on it. It's yours. But let's say you're only five five. Right. Now, you're five five. So no matter how much you try to reach, no matter how much you try to jump, you ain't going to be able to get it yourself. Right. But you got to remember, the blessing is for you. Amen. So how do you get it? See, God always provides a way. You just got to put your you got to put your mind inside of his to understand how to get it. Right. So now just because you can't get to that blessing, uh, that doesn't uh, it shouldn't change your desire to want to get the blessing. Right. right? It's yours. It's got your name on it. Right. Amen. So let's say, you know, you're five, five and you look to the left and you see someone who's seven foot. Right. Now, this person is seven foot. And you have to understand that height is something that the Bible talks about is no one can add a stature to himself. Faith is your height is something that God has determined, predetermined for you. So some of you are tall, some of you are short. And no matter what, you can't change it. Right. So you you look to the left and you see someone who is seven foot tall and you go over there. And this is the key thing to remember. You're not short enough to be able to reach the guy that's seven foot. No matter what, you'll always have enough height in order to reach somebody else. Right. You're always going to have enough faith to reach God in order to get what you really need from him. You're never hopeless. And that's the thing that the enemy likes to come and battle in our head is, oh, you just ain't got enough faith. Oh, you're just not this. You're just not that. And it's just nothing but a, uh, it's nothing but a lie. That's why that's why Paul could say, "Deaf, where is there? Where is your sting? Yeah. Like you're just bluffing it to me because I know that I've received Christ. I have faith in everything that I have need of. I can I may not be able to get it with my own faith, but I can reach out to something else that can get it for me. Right. Amen. And so and that's why, you know, a lot of times people get discouraged. They say because their faith is too weak and you got to get that weak uh, word out of your vocabulary. Amen. You got to get that weak word out of your vocabulary. It is true that your faith may be small. Right. And uh, and I have to, and, and uh, I think the prophet will talk about it later on in the message, because, you know, I have to we have to tell each other the truth. You know, a lot of times people like to throw like, oh, yeah, I'll give you big faith. You may not have big faith. You may not have big faith as uh, uh, someone else has or uh, uh, or a big faith as somebody else has. But when you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, no matter how small it is, you still have a, a, a measure of faith. Right. So that's what the Bible talks about, having a measure of faith. But and Jesus said that if you had the faith of a mustard seed, right, you can move mountains. Amen. Amen. Now, how that mountain is moved, well, that's up to God. So we're going to turn to the message. It shall be it shall be even. Um, she can pull it up. And I forgot the year, so I can probably just read it. It shall be even as it was told me. And this is um, a message that the prophet preached. And I'll just go ahead and read uh, this verse 65 it says maybe you might not. And also when he talks about this thing, um, it's going to it's going to tie into when we get to healings and miracles as well. It says maybe you might not have the spontaneous faith to bring something uh, just a miracle right to you, like right quick. Like some people, man, they just speak and it just like it just pops right in it, right in their laps. <laughs> and people can get discouraged when they see that because they're thinking, well, why is right. that happen to That's me? Right. That don't mean that you can't get whatever you need to receive. Right. Yours may take a little bit more time, Amen. but the end result is you've got it. Right. That's the most important thing is that you got it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He said here, you may not have that kind of faith. But Jesus said, if um, if you had the faith like a mustard seed, you could you could say this mountain be moved and by and by it will come to pass. By and by it will come to pass. It wouldn't vanish away. But by and by, it will come right. to pass. Right. Um, so your so your faith, your faith is never. And that's why we kind of got to we got to kind of shift our minds into the way God sees it and how, how the way God designed us. Your faith is not small enough that you can't anchor on to something. 
right? And you got to keep that in your mind that I, I may have a small faith, but I can anchor on to something that can help me to get whatever I need. So that going back to the example of that five, five guy, he can go up to that seven. He can go up to that seven footer and he can tap on the shoulder. His hand is not too short enough. Now, his hand may not be able to reach that top shelf, but he can still tap on that guy that's seven foot and say, hey, there's a box up there. Can you get it for me? The seven footer looks up there. He's like, no problem. He just easy faith, just reaches it down, comes down and then gives it to you. And that's what a gift of faith is. That's what a gift of faith is in the church. There are individuals in the church that when they say stuff, it just, they just know, they just believe it and know how to receive it. Exactly you right. might be struggling uh, to receive it, but you can come to this individual and say, hey, brother, I got a need. Can you help me pray? Brother, I have a situation. Can you come help me pray? And then that can help come bring the blessing down into your own hands. Glory. Right? Praise God. And that's for healing. That's for that's for uh, anything that you uh, that you that you uh, might have need of, right? Um, so um, you might be um, you might be praying for for a new job, right? Some people are looking for a new job. The market might be tough, um, but your faith might not might not be enough for you to get that job. But it doesn't mean that you can't you can't you can't receive it. Right. You might need to get a hold of some brother or sister that has that gift of faith, which is why God put it in the church. And he said, if two would touch and agree on one thing, I would do it. Right. Two it would touch. So you have to have two. You have to have someone that has this gift of faith. And you got to have this individual that he may not be able to have it. But God wrote provisions in there for those that even if you have small faith, you can still receive from God. Amen. 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 You can still receive from God. Right. We're not we're not we're not walking around like chickens. We're not walking around like we Christians. We know exactly what we have. God has given us the knowledge in order to be able to access him. And when we walk according to his word, he has to fulfill it. Right. He has to fulfill it. So that's the reason why we have to identify where the gifts are in the church. We have to identify where the gifts are in the church. That's why restoration of the gifts was so important to God, because it's how he operates within the local church. You know, the prophet couldn't be in one uh, um, be in one location simultaneously. Jesus Christ himself couldn't be in a, a one location simultaneously. But the gifts, the restoration of the gifts was uh, was uh, was a way that God could reach everybody. Right. Reach everybody needs. So if you're going through some kind of issue, you didn't have to. Oh, well, I need to uh, wait to wake up to call the prophet to see if I can get some healing. No, no, no. You've got gifts of healing right inside of the church. You ain't got to worry about waiting on it. And you can have someone that you can uh, reach out to to help you uh, get that healing that you want. So, you know, and uh, as going back to the example, we can all identify who the tallest people in the room are. And we can identify who the shortest people are. We know who the strongest people are. We know who the weakest people are. And that's just the natural and the natural types, the spiritual. We should be able to identify those that got big faith. Right. We should be able to identify those that have uh, faith to, uh, to move mountains, that spontaneous faith because they're there. Right. Right. <laughs> Amen. So we need to identify the gifts and. And that's why identification is very important in restoration, Amen. right? Because when we get our new church, you know, and me, I'm not looking for a 5,000 member church or a 10,000 member church, right? We want members that have been identified in the body of Christ, which means they have a gift. They have the Holy Spirit to help them live the life and to use the gift and operate the gift. So every Sunday we're going to church and we ain't going to a club. We're not going to a zoo. We're not going to some place where, you know, because the gifts get out. You know, you have people coming to church and the gifts get all out of order and it just causes the church to fall. You know, people start to impersonating gifts, which creates jealousy. And then people start using gifts in a way that is uh, uh, um, to, uh, with lusting spirits and you start breaking families up. But no, we want a church that people have been identified and restored back to their original position. Right. So then we can all be blessed and stay blessed. Yeah. All right. Amen. So we're going to go through and uh, look at some of these examples of a gift of gifts of faith. I think we're just going to go through one. It's uh, the Queen of Sheba um, preached in 60 0, 7, 1, 0, and We're going to read paragraph 17, I believe. Um, yes. Oh, wait. Mm, 
Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yep. So it reads here. Now, I believe that these ministries that we have to, that we have today across the world, one different from the other. I was watching Brother Oral Roberts just a few moments ago in the room. They have a television in the room in there they have for me. And that's amazing how the prophet was still, he still looked at people even though they weren't in the message. But yeah, he still was considering them and like, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm interested in this person's ministry and what they're doing for the Lord. Uh, um, and so he said, and I was, I heard them announce that Oral Roberts and I went over and turned the television on. And they did. And I seen Oral, Oral praying for a little sick baby from up in Canada, had a bad eye. And I believe the parents was Catholic. And Brother Roberts, in his real way of faith, he slammed his hand down on the little baby and prayed for it. And the little baby was healed. And he says here, now that's a real gift of faith that Brother Roberts had. So the prophet wasn't, I'm glad that we, that, I'm glad that God could get hold of a man that wasn't jealous. Jealous with the gifts of feeling and seeing someone else doing it. But no, he said, no, man, that's a gift of faith over there. That's a real gift of faith operating over there, even though he wasn't the one doing it. And that's what we want to see in the church. Right. All right. And we're going to continue. And it says, and we know that Brother Jack Cole, he used to have a little anvil laying by the side of his desk. Somebody come up with glasses on. He take the glasses off and break them with the hammer, throw them over, have crunches. He take their crunches first and chop them up, throw them away. He burnt every bridge uh, there. They had only one Jack Cole. And so he's talking about this man's gift of faith where he just, hey, look, I believe you're healed and I ain't trying to see nothing else. All right. <laughs> he was determined. <laughs> but, I, but, but what I'm trying to hope to get, though, is we've got Oral Roberts in here. We got Jack Coe's in here, you know, <laughs> amen, you know, and when I get to the age where I start wearing glasses, I want to be able to go to you and you break my glasses up so I can, so I can see, all right, <laughs> amen, <laughs> so, <laughs> so those are the gifts, that is what, that, that is what the gift of faith is and what it is used for in order to help the church out, right? right, right. And so we're going to talk about the next uh, gifts that we have in the Bible. And we're going to go back to 1 Chronicles 12, uh, 9 through 10. Oh, Corinthians, yeah. 1 Corinthians 12, um, 9 through 10. And we're going to start from, to another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the, uh, the working of miracles, right? Um, and so I grouped these two together. Because they, they serve the same purpose in, uh, try, I believe, in uh, trying to bring uh, some healing to somebody, right? Uh, so we, we all appreciate how the prophet performed miracles. But the thing, about, the thing I love about Jesus is when you get in a relationship with God, you won't be dependent upon a man. You, you appreciate what God has done through man's. But when you have Christ in your life, you realize that his spirit does the same thing everywhere. That's why the prophet could say that, you know, if you got the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you can cut up and act up and this person got the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they live in right, there's something wrong. We love his spirit because if it operates the same in one, it does the works in one person. It does it in all people. Right. So to understand the gifts of healing, we have to first understand what healing is. Right. So we're triune beings. Uh, we have a body, a spirit and a soul. And what healing does, it's pretty simple. Uh, healing just brings you back to a desired state, right? Healing brings you back to whatever desired state that you had. Uh, and now there's a difference between, the Bible says here, uh, the, uh, between gifts of healing, and then there's also a divine gift, which comes through the land. And the prophet had a divine gift of healing. You know, some people can kind of get these things twisted up, but, he, but um, I believe he explained it as, he would get vibrations if you would touch someone's hand and he would see the sickness on, on their wrist. That's right, brother. And you pray for them, That's it, right. the vibrations would go, the sickness would go away, and then he knew that they were healed. Now that was a divine gift of healing. Amen, Only the prophet had that. Yeah. Like, uh, it's an or, uh, ordained gift before the foundation of the world, and only one person has that gift. And God uses that as a basis to not be worshipped, but for you to develop faith in healing. Because the gift is no longer here. Amen. That gift is no longer here. But has God stopped healing? No. Well, no. All right. So that gift is just to use to help build your faith in God to receive what you need to receive. Amen. Um, and so 
um, then there's the gifts of healing, which is uh, the prophet described as uh, many ways of healing. Um, and what we need to understand, uh, the next thing that we need to understand is what happens during a healing and a miracle. And for that, we're going to turn to the message healing, which was preached in 53904. Uh, and we're going to start from paragraph uh, 24. And I'll just read a little bit of it and kind of skip over some of it so it's not too long. So it reads, now, believers, here's what's the matter with you. You're afraid to take the initiative. You're afraid to stand and claim your God given privilege. See, the devil actually leaves. And when he goes out, then you feel better for a few days. And then after a while, you say, I'm getting sick about 72 hours, a real case, less it's a miracle, just divine. So here he's making a distinction between miracle and healing. Now, there's a difference between gifts of miracles and gifts of healing. Does anyone know that there are two different gifts altogether? Now, healing, when the regular procedure, that person will get good, just a real good, just a real good for a few days. And then they get then they get real sick. What's the matter? That big lump of cancer in there is dead tissue, no life in it. It'll begin swelling, swelling. And oh, you get sick. We're going to skip all the way down to 26 paragraph 26 says in plain words where the simplest child would understand and the only way I know to put it, it'll rot. As it's laying right there, they're rotting in your body. When it, when it does, your heart stream, your bloodstream is being purified by your heart and it picks up that and causes sickness and headaches and oh, you can't stand up hardly. And, and, and this, is, this is a beautiful thing because you have to understand, Brother Branham didn't go to medical school. And a lot of doctors may not know how to explain this. But he had a divine gift of healing and a knowledge given from God to be able to see these things and come and explain them to us so that when we go to the doctors and we're not feeling well, we don't get scared. Of, oh, the doctor, oh, it doesn't look like you're getting any better. But we have Dr. Jesus that says, just hold on, just hold on. The healing is coming. All right. And so it re as we continue, it says, and the person immediately, the patient, weak in faith. There goes that word weak again will say, I lost my healing, all right? Why God's not that kind of a father. Oh man, you can't lose your healing. Jesus purchased it, it's yours. When Jesus prayed for Peter said, I pray that your faith fail not, right? So that's something, and, 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 I, and I love it because that was Jesus. Jesus was a representation of what we should be. And he realized, Jesus realized he was strong in faith. And he looked at Peter and he was like, no, I'm praying that your faith doesn't fail. And what was told to Peter was, when you receive, when you get converted, go and strengthen your brothers. So we all should be at a point where we want to see, because um, we know that people's faith can waver and can weaken. And don't be ashamed uh, as uh, uh, when you're in that kind of a situation. Don't be ashamed to not want to go to a brother and say, hey, I'm just having a moment of weakness. Don't try to fight it all on your own. Go to someone that can pray for you just like Jesus prayed for Peter. Right. And we know that um, um, by faith, we know that um, I, I can't remember, can't remember what sister was, but she said, I know, Jesus, that whatever you ask of God, God will do it. But now we're the Jesus of today and people that are in weak of faith should be able to come to us and say, hey, I'm going through this right now. But I know you're a real Christian. I know that when you get on your knees and when you pray, God's going to do something. Right. We should have the exact same testimony as that. It says, I'll pray that your faith not fail, not his morals, because they did. And it's important to understand that is because the currency in the church is not morals or righteousness. The currency to receive things from God is faith, faith alone. That's why the prophet said, you know, you will have people that have been going to church for years, just righteous living. They come up to the prayer line and can't even get, can't even get healing for a toothache. But you'll have a prostitute or a drugger will come right up, no morals at all, but believe what they see and leave back uh, healed, right? So, and it's also, it's just to show that it's not, it's, it, your, uh, your faith, it, we want to live a righteous life, right? We do want to live a righteous life and God requires it. But the element of faith is a little bit separate, right? Uh, in order for us to uh, receive from God, right? So we're going to continue this. Now, now, when you go, now let me show you what takes place. Excuse me for saying, let me show you. We're going to get little details in this. I didn't mean that. I don't mean that. I could show you nothing, but I'll tell you the best of my knowledge what I see in the realm of it. 
So this prophet is looking in the realm. He's looking beyond the realm of your sickness. And he's able to see these things that doctors can't see, that me and you cannot see, and, men, and can identify them. And it's, it, and it's, not, for you to, it's not for you to worship a man, but it's for, for you to appreciate the gift God gave him so that you could have faith in your healing. That you could understand these things and understand and know that, OK, even though I might feel bad, you know, so and so pray for me, but I but I but I still feel bad. That doesn't mean that you're not healed. That doesn't mean that you're not healed. <laughs> right. He says that when that cancer goes out, when it's cast out, you see the very evidence of everything that was of the son of God in his and the leading of his people working and showing his signs and miracle. And that demon is pronounced gone and you feel it's gone. And then in two or three days, you start doubting again. The very faith that taking it out, unbelief will bring it back again. Wow. Right. So it is true that you can receive your healing from God. Right. But as Brother Jack had preached, if you want to keep your healing, there's where righteousness comes in. When you live righteous to God, it shows that you believe God. And when you keep believing God, you keep that faith in order for you to always be healed. All right. So, um, so what exactly are the gifts of healing? Now that we kind of understand what healing is, and we need to understand exactly what these gifts are. So I want everybody in here to raise your hand. Everybody raise your hand and say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Amen. See, your healing was already purchased 2,000 years ago. God. You're already healed. Glory. It's not, some, it's not some great gift. It's not some great person. It's not some uh, uh, necessarily the hands and all these things. Hallelujah. You were already healed 2,000 years ago when Christ hung his head on the cross. Amen. It was a finished work. Amen. All right. Amen. It was a finished, finished work. Right. So all, all the gift of healings or these gifts of healing, all they come to do is to stimulate your inner man to say, I am healed. Amen. And then when the inner man says, I am healed, it's over. Amen. There's not enough devils in hell. There's not enough doubt. There's not enough uh, uh, issues. Not, I mean, the doctor could explain your symptoms away. He could give you back a report. But once you know that inner man has said amen to the word of God, God will bring it to pass. Amen. 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 No, it's, it's not someone that's touching you with hands, but it's your faith Glory. that's doing it. All right. It's your faith that's Glory. doing the work. So we're going to turn to the message, Why I'm Praying for the Sick, uh, preaching 540314, and we'll start at um, paragraph 28. <laughs> and it reads here, I've been interviewed at Mayo Brothers twice, so they say, we don't profess to be healers, Reverend Brandon, we only profess to assist nature. There's only one healer, that's God, Amen. right? God is the only healer, and that's correct. No minister can heal you. No, there's people who claim to have gifts of healing. Gifts of healing don't mean you heal people. It only means you have the faith in the word, right? You only have faith in the word. And we're going to go drop down to 32. And he says here, God works in many different ways to heal the sick. It's, it's important to understand this because God has a particular way of doing things. And you have to get in channel into that in order to receive from God, because God's not a liar. If God says you're healed, you're healed. Amen. Now, however that happens, that's on him. Right. But God is not a liar. All right. So God works in many different ways to heal the sick. Sometimes preaching the word. Sometimes. Amen. Sometime a neighbor sitting by you. He just lay his hands over you. Feel like he should do so. Always do that. What? Whatever a born again child of God feels to pray for the sick, that's the Holy Spirit moving in you to do so. No matter who's going to pray for the person, you go ahead and pray for them. And that's important. No matter who's going to pray for the person, you go ahead and pray for them anyhow. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. Um, and this is actually... Um, just to kind of paraphrase it, I don't want to take too much time, but this is actually a paraphrase because Brother Jack brought this story up of a woman that was wanting to get some healing for her baby. And this one lady just felt, she's like, man, I just feel in my conscience like God wants me to pray for this child. Right. So I just want to say a prayer for that child. <laughs> 
And the fun, one of the funny things that I find about it is the lady that had her child pray for, and this is why we need the knowledge of God to come in and show us how God operates. Because the funny thing is she still went up to the prayer line. Right. And that's why Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant of the spiritual gifts, because when she went up to the prayer line, there's nothing the prophet could do. He didn't say a prayer. He didn't. He, there was no prayer. He said he said he just he just looked at the child. He said, hold on a second. Your child's already healed. Right. You know, so. Oh, so the moment that that lady, that sister had submitted herself to the Holy Spirit, touched the child, the work was already done in the meeting of the prophet. That's right. So, like I said, we appreciate the great men of God, right? right? But the gifts are in the Amen. church operating. Amen. Whether there's a prophet or no prophet, right. the gift of healing is still there for us to use. Amen. It's the same Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we have to, um, so we have to let people know how these things work, or else people get frustrated. And there's where, because you don't lose your faith. Right. You don't lose your healing. You don't lose your faith, but you can weaken your faith. Your faith can be weakened by not understanding how God is doing things. So God's got to kind of kind of come and give a word to encourage you in that to know that uh, uh, you still uh, um, have your healing. Right. And it's important if uh, God um, gives you the gift of healing that you're using it for his glory. And we're going to turn to uh, the message, Sirs, We Would See Jesus, preached in 610208. And this is why I said in the beginning of the sermon, uh, gifts are not for personal gain. And you have to be careful about these things. Uh, and a lot of these things, because you're born in the message, you are to receive a lot of light. But you may be able to tell these things to help other people out that are in certain situations. Um, and it reads just like what Charlie Fuller said down here one time, Brother Fuller, he said, I believe in these gifts and I believe in these great gifts of healing, too, but said they're gifts of healing. But God is going to make them answer at the judgment bar for commercializing it. Wow. And I believe so. He's right there. Yes, sir. Don't commercialize God. He can't be commercialized, but God will make you pay for what you're doing the way that you use it. So, you know, a lot of times we will laugh at, you know, people or not laugh, but you know, we may poke fun of people, you know, the televangelists that they say, you know, give me five hundred dollars to seed your blessing or give me a thousand dollars for your healing. Uh, you know, if no one's nobody's going to go to a buffet where there's no food. Right. So these people are actually doing the work of God. Right. These people are getting healed. But the problem is they're doing it from a place like the people are already beat up. People are already sick. The people are already going through. And now they're using their gift in order to take advantage of these people in order to take their resources. But the problem is uh, Christ already paid for the healing. It's already been paid. Right. So it's a uh, uh, it's a um, it's a, uh, a mockery to the gospel. Right. Um, so now um, as we, um, we'll get ready to close in a, in a few. So we'll, we'll, we'll touch on these miracles real quick. So now miracles are just are, are just that. Right. So we've got the gifts of healing. Miracles are just that they happen instantly. It's a divine move of God. God comes right on the scene and changes things around. It's done in a way where it's you just can't explain it. Doctors can't explain it. No one can explain it. God just comes down on the side. And that process of you having to wait for your healing, God bypasses all of that and just brings you uh, uh, up into a place of restoration just like that. And you'll notice um, I don't know if you would call this a miracle or not, but a lot of times when you were saved, there were some things you just stopped. You just quit right there. There are some things when you got saved, uh, the Holy Spirit came into your life. It was over drinking, smoking, all that. You just stop all that. While there are other things where God kind of got to help you to kind of get healing from that thing. And we and we thank God for the patience and healing to know it's still a finished work, but some things you kind of got to go through because a lot of times people will struggle with stuff and they'll just think like, man, I'm just not a Christian. It's like, no, nah, you just got to get your healing and you got to let it, let it, let God do it the way that he wants to do it. Right. Let the Lord do it the way he wants to do it. But the biggest thing is in your heart, you have to have the desire not to do it. That's the key. We don't we don't want the desire to do these things. And that's the key thing. And when God sees that, God can work with you. Right. So it's important how uh, God uh, to understand the mind of God, how it gets operate, uh, because another another important thing that you got to remember with faith is you also have hope. 
right? Now, you can have the faith to receive miracles, but you can also have hope for miracles as well. And those are two different things. You can hope for a miracle, but hoping doesn't promise you you'll get a miracle. You don't hope for healing. God paid for that. You are already healed. You don't have to hope, oh, well, I wonder if I'll get healed or not, or I wonder if God's going to help me or not. No, hope is not applied for healing. Your faith is automatically attached to healing. God has already healed you. It's a done work. Now, for a miracle, that's something that you can hope for. God can give you the faith for it. You can also hope for it because the Bible says that there are workers working of miracles that are in the church, right? right? So we're going to read the message experiences um, 47, 1, 2, 0, 7, and start at paragraph 22. Um, let me see. No, we're going to actually start at uh, paragraph 23, if you can pull it up, but I'll start reading. And it says here, a little boy, he was so pathetic, the little fella come by, and I might just tell this, it's hanging there in the auditorium now, a little boy with braces over his legs, he come through the, he come through the polo, he said, Brother Branham, he said, will you say the prayer for me? I said, yes, and his mother was there, and I, and, and I said, she said, if you'll just say the prayer for him, Brother Branham, and I said, all right, sister, and I said, now you're not, she said, I do not desire a miracle, right? I do not desire a miracle. She said, I just desire you to say the prayer. And I had the prayer for the little boy just a moment and laid hands upon him. And brother, uh, brother, sister, two nights after that, the little boy was standing at the door, the entrance where I come in, his braces hanging on his back. He was standing there. See the simplicity, the uh, uh, humbleness of the mother said, no, Brother Branham, I can believe God. I don't have to see any outstanding miracle, said I can believe God. And I love that about the woman because it shows us Gentiles, we're not gift seekers. And that's where Pentecost gets it wrong. They're always looking for gifts. They're always looking for a miracle. They're always looking for a blast blessing. But as, but as Gentile, full word bride, Lord, however you want to do it. Lord, it, it may not be a miracle. I may have to sit here and suffer in my bed for seven days. But Lord, I still believe you are a healer. Right? That's the thing uh, um, that, we, that we love about uh, being Gentiles. Now, God, but God still uses miracles now. And we're going to turn to the Great Commission um, uh, message, Great Commission, and read chapter 13. So I kind of wind this up. And it reads here, it says, I have seen prayer perform miracles. Yes, in this last day, in this modern age that we're living in, I've seen more miracles that Jesus Christ did in my meetings than I've read in this entire book. So the miracles, the working of miracles are still in the church. So it's the workers of miracles. It's the gifts of healing. All of these things are, are inside of the church. And just to kind of add an extension, because these are, the, these are the spiritual gifts, but healing can come through the song leader. If Brother Solomon is inspired to sing a particular song, Right. A lot of times we're always focusing on the message like, well, what is it? What, what is what is so and so going to preach? What is so and so going to say? But God may give you healing right through that song service. It'd be just a simple song. It'd be just one line. Right. But if it speaks to your heart for your situation, is God trying to use a gift to reach to you? Right. Um, I believe one of the uh, one. Of, I believe um, another gift of healing. Uh, I believe mothers are, are like healers in the home. Right. Mothers have uh, healing gifts in the home. I remember one time. I don't know if I had a cold or was a flu in Georgia, but I just felt horrible and I was just on my bed. But my mom came into the room and got in a rocking chair right by my bed and she started just patting my forehead. And I wasn't I wasn't healed instantly, but you just felt better because she was right there. And that's what a gift of healing does. You may not get an instant healing. It may not happen instantly. You still may be suffering, but at least, you know, something's there that's still kind of holding you. Right. And so that's how these gifts are supposed to be used in the church. And God has God has made you and created you in a way to be able to have a particular gift in order to bless somebody else. So that's why we have to get ourselves out the way. That's why uh, one of the most important things that I mentioned in the last message is you got to have love. Yeah. Right. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is that people that have gifts and I talked about it, people always want to use gifts. But you can use gifts without love. You can use gifts without love. But the problem of it is sometimes God wants to use love without a gift. Right. 
um, I know I'm the type of person, you know, I like to have a lot of knowledge and stuff. I believe God has blessed me. And sometimes, you know, I'll be in a position where I'm trying to figure my way out of a situation that I'm dealing with. And it's like, no, 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 you need to put that to the side and just bear with these people and really show them love. And that's why Paul came in there uh, and talked about how though you have uh, all, know all mysteries, though you have knowledge, you have faith to move mountains, right? You have all of these gifts you can prophesy. I mean, you come in church and you prophesy blessings for everyone every single week. But if you don't have any love, right, it doesn't mean anything. So that's what we want to uh, pray for, church. In closing, we want to pray that God give us more love. God, give us more understanding for how you do things. God, help us to understand where the gifts are located. And I, I mentioned this before, we don't, we, don't, we don't want people streaming. We need people in the church. We need the gifts all in the church so we can identify and know and use them so that when we're going through our problems, we can call on God and God can be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. So we'll go close in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, you've, you've spoken your word, Lord God. Lord, we know that, that all knowledge and all wisdom and all understanding, it comes from you, O Lord God, and it's a revelation and a gift, O Lord Jesus Christ, that you've given us, O Lord God. There are people, O Lord God, that are struggling for healing. There are people in the hospital right now that don't know if they're going to make it or not, not knowing that you died 2,000 years ago and the healing is already done. They just need the faith to be able to anchor onto it. But you chose us, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. You chose us to be able to receive and, and, and to get from you, O oh Lord God. Lord, sometimes we do admit that our faith may be weak, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. But Lord, help us to recognize where these gifts of faith are, the gifts of miracles, the gifts of healing, O oh Lord God. Lord, we may not be strong enough to... Uh, um, to have the faith to pray for our wayward sons and daughters, oh Lord God. But Lord, we can hold our hand, we can touch and agree with someone in the church that may have gone through the same thing and they've got the faith to believe it. Oh Lord, help us to identify those individuals, oh Lord, that we can touch and agree that you can do the same thing if you did it for them, you can do it for us as well, oh Lord God. Oh Lord, just restore the gifts in the church, oh Lord God. Let love be the focal point, oh Lord Jesus Christ. And bless us, oh Lord, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we thank the Lord for the word um, on tonight. Um, so much Brother Quentin was sharing there that, um, uh, man, I could take off and preach a whole other sermon. Uh, but I, I did want to say this. One of the things I just felt the Holy Spirit was emphasizing through him is that we have this ability as gifts um, and identifying and recognizing uh, gifts, letting the Holy Ghost kind of do that, not um, not us doing it ourselves, but, but it's God has a way, and I'll, I'll put it this way, God has given each one of us already something, but it's us yielding and letting him just get the glory out of that. But um, the, the thing of it is, he says, being able to go to a brother that got this gift of faith, like, brother, I just, I know I got faith, uh, but I just need just a little, little extra help. And being able to, you know, get somebody that can reach a little higher than you can. Um, the, the thing of it is, is it goes right back to Brother McBride's sermon <laughs> that we are all connected. <laughs> Right, and, and see how, you know, uh, what the devil wants to do is bring little petty things into the church to keep the people disconnected. And I mean, and that brother, the sister that you're getting disconnected from is the one that got the gift that you need. But the enemy's job, right, is to disconnect us. We got to fight the devil. Every little thing that the devil's trying to do, we got to fight that. I heard while I was away, I heard Brother Troy make a statement, um, I don't do this person. That's the devil that's trying to come in amongst the people. No, we do everybody, right? That's my brother, that's my sister. And Brother Branham said, we might not hang like that, but still we brothers and sisters in Christ, right? But, but, but we got to understand that uh, uh, if, if we lose the connection, 
right? That's, that's what the restoration is all about, to bring that connection back in place. Because these gifts operate accordingly. You know, I tell you, I was just, I, I'm, I'm sitting there and, and, you know, the other thing I'll tell you about the gift of, um, um, of, of healing and a gift of miracle. And it say, the Bible says gifts, gifts. But, um, you know, uh, the, I remember years ago, um, Brother Coleman had preached a sermon and said, and there was, there's what we call instant miracles. And then there's also span of time miracles. They're both miracles. But just some happen, like we say a word of prayer right now and it's done. But then there's others that we say a prayer right now, you still go home with symptoms. Amen. But you yet believe God that he has done uh, what he promised that he was going to do. And, uh, you know, so, you know, he, he you all know the story. Brother Branham told the, the ladies that come into the prayer line and they were prayed for and they went home. And uh, weeks later, weeks later, uh, just said that uh, the angel came through the neighborhood. <laughs> to ensure a man that they received what they were prayed for and the lady didn't know why but she started feeling a little funny where she used to not be be able to eat she said i just feel i feel led to eat <laughs> and she got some of the worst stuff that she knew would upset her stomach and she started eating and didn't feel nothing. Eating a little bit more, didn't feel nothing. Next thing you know, she's in praise God. I'm, I've been healed, and, and and that was a span of time, right? So 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 when she um you know she said I'm going up to tell my my neighbor what just happened to me. Now why is she going to say that? In order to in, encourage that other lady's faith, but when she got there, it was a revival already happening in the house. And, and, and both of them had been healed in the same neighborhood. Amen. Glory to God. Brother, sister, why can't all of us get our healing? All of us get our delivering. If, if the angels passing by, then do not pass me by. <laughs> but this is, this is what we need. We realize we connected like that. And we got to fight that devil. Every little thing he try to no 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 that ain't you know that ain't even Christian, that ain't even Christian. You gotta fight that, Amen. Praise God. Now you know that sister calling you and you won't pick up the phone. I'm gonna just let it go to voicemail. You ain't even doing nothing. Pick up the phone and just say God bless you. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm <laughs> man. The preacher that preached. <laughs> that was that was some good word here tonight. I'm I, I, I'm telling you. I I I I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. I, uh, uh, Oh, you don't lose your healing or your faith, but you can weaken your faith. And um, I just quickly want to say this. Brother Branham told us that um, when we limit God to doing things uh, only in one way, actually you paralyze your faith. And this is why, you know, if you're expecting a check in the mail, because maybe you got one before. You got an unexpected check in the mail. And now the way that you look for God to do things is to always get an unexpected check in the mail. You limit God and you weaken your faith. Now, I'm going to say something here. I'm going to say something. Y'all going to get these announcements from me, but I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to take a big step. I'm, 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 y'all get y'all ready? Y'all ready? Okay. I come from a day and time where people used to feel led. Yeah. <laughs> they used to feel led 
to just give you a 20 or 50 or 100. No, not to the pastor, but to another brother or sister. I don't know why. I just, brother, and you walk out the church. I mean, you just press your way to church. They didn't know you didn't even have gas to get here. And then somebody walk up and slip you a hundred. God just told me to give you this hundred dollar bill. When was the last time God told you to give somebody something? And I'm not talking about somebody on the corner that's just blowing the money. I'm talking about one of the brothers or sisters in the church. Well, we we want to be led by the Spirit. Those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. But we used to, we used to have them type of leading. Just I just want to slip you this. God, God told me to give this to you. Amen. 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 All right, and, and now don't get to, they, they slip you one, and now all of a sudden you want to get next to them. Right. <laughs> you better get up out of here. <laughs> but we used to feel led like that. And we need those type of leaders again. You, you don't know who's going through what. And, and when somebody slip you something, you get to a point. Amen? Get yourself to a point financially where you can slip somebody else something. They say pay it forward. Somebody bless me. I just want to be a blessing to you. The next person, somebody bless me. I just want to be a blessing. And the blessing just keep flowing. And the more you give, the more he gives to you. Oh, my. Let me get these announcements, y'all. Let me get the announcements. Please bring up the announcements. I thank God for the word. Amen. We, we, we have uh, prayer uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Sunday in the service at 1030. Uh, certainly uh, coming under expectation. Um, Sunday school from 9.30 to 10, and um, uh, we got the youth and young adult uh, classes that are going, and, 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 and certainly encourage our, anyone that would like to be a part of the young adult class, they're certainly welcome uh, to that. And um, the virtual streaming continues through Twitter, Facebook, and our church website. Is the church website running again? Okay, it's up again. All right, thank the Lord. Uh, and also um, the some of the upcoming events, South Florida Choir rehearsal on June 29th at 6 p.m. It's going to be at Bride of Christ Tabernacle. And uh, we got a combined service there on June 30th at 6.30 p.m. And that's going to, again, be at Bride of Christ Tabernacle. Um, and trusting that we'll, uh, some of us will be able to attend a man just uh, representing um, a spirit and truth tabernacle. Um, I know there was a number of us that made it last week to Sister Smith's uh, homegoing service, and we thank you for for going and uh, just uh, representing the church. And you know, I heard it was a, a wonderful send off uh, for our precious sister. And as I said before, this is like the second year in a row. I think that they've had a major person in the church to pass right before meetings. And uh, so the church is really going through, and I think any time they can see uh, just a friendly face from somewhere else, it just really encourages them, especially during this time. So this, this weekend, they have their camp meeting, their annual camp, camp meeting. Brother Isaiah Brooks will be preaching, and that's Friday, <coughs> June 21st at 7 p.m., and then Saturday, uh, June 22nd at 5 p.m., and then Sunday, uh, June 23rd, uh, they'll be having their meeting, so keep uh, keep those in mind, and if, if any are able to make it to one uh, or two of the services, I think that would be wonderful. Um, I know I'll be there Friday. I'm not certain right now about Saturday just yet, uh, but I'll certainly be there Friday. But if, if others are able to do it, then I think it would be a blessing. Don't forget the um, <clears throat> Message Believers Youth Banquet. Uh, it's hosted by SAT. That's going to be Friday, August 23rd. If you have not registered, just download the app. Go to the App Store, look for Spirit and Truth Tabernacle. That's our logo there on the screen. You see that logo, just download the app. Whether you have an Apple phone or a Google, I mean an Android phone, uh, you can register right there online. Um, while I was there in Canada, 
Um, there's, I, I think I went to at least two different cities. I went three altogether, but two different cities and people from those churches were registering, coming to our banquet. Uh, that I had already registered, you know, coming to our banquet. And uh, I was just really shocked, <laughs> you know, I mean, and we were way up you know way up there but uh, people are hearing about it and they are registering from from all over the world and uh, so we're looking forward to what God is going to do uh, during that time so uh, again I want our church to make sure our young people are registered and going and the uh, other thing I do want to say is that um, uh, I want our young people to be uh, uh, dressed appropriately too when you're going amen Amen. This this is not the event where you show out. Amen. Put the holiest garment you got on. Amen. Get the holiest one you got and wear that one to the banquet. But uh, but uh, sometimes we lose our holiness. It's the truth. Amen. We lose our holiness. We we forget, and that that's that's not what we're trying to do. Stay holy now. Amen. And, and, and please don't don't let us be the host church. And people saying things. Oh, did you see how? No, don't don't let that testimony go out of here. Amen. All right. So uh, we expecting everybody to, to participate and, and let's do it right. Let's be a, a, an example. The night of worship is going to happen um, August 24th at 6 p.m. And that'll be at Palm Beach Gardens Community High School. So keep that uh, in mind our giving we want to reiterate zell is the primary way to give uh cash app and paypal are now um, taking money from your giving as soon as you give it they take it and then you know give the results to the church so zell does not do that but cash app and paypal are, are now uh, trying to get in on God's money. So we ask that you avoid Cash App and PayPal. Uh, if you want to mail something in, use Spirit and Truth Tabernacle, uh, P.O. Box 222462, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33422. All right. Um, I think that's all I need to mention. Any testimonies or prayer requests? Amen. I got one here. I got one there. Any other? I got one there. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's start here, Brother Josue. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Um, I think I maybe like two minutes, and I'll share a small testimony. <clears throat> and I promise you, there, I, I did not plan to share this testimony. But I, I believe that God, um, when there's a desire in somebody's heart, he'll make a way. <clears throat> And um, l lately I've been like really busy <clears throat> back there with like my kid. You know, it's different when you come to church with your kid than when you don't, you know. Mm. I, I like church. I like to be all, all in the message, but it's, it's kind of hard. So I, I know that on the way here, God provided for, for little Josue not to come as much as I tried for him to come and provided Abby to drive. So on the way to church, I, I was got to read a word, you know, and I was telling the girls that sometimes, you know, if you have a desire in your heart and you um, set yourself up, you can actually, like, you know, change the service, you know? So I was reading in Matthew 12, and it kind of just connects because it was talking about when Jesus was doing some stuff on the Sabbath and the, the, the Pharisees were telling him some stuff and he tried to, like, run away, and, and it said that the a multitude took off with him and, and it said that they were all healed. And, and I was telling the girls, I was like, sometimes you gotta look a little more and it says they were all healed. So like, think about it. Like <laughs> all, they were all healed. It, it doesn't say who or what, but that's not my testimony. I just wanted to say that because then it just kind of goes into this. And then as soon as he started um, talking, I think he went to the second quote, like something just came over me real quick. It was like, like right there, like you sharing this testimony right now, you know, and and I promise you, I didn't, I, didn't, I mean, I, I like sharing testimonies. I can't because I'm back there and, and my mind is not 
anytime I've shared testimony, like the Lord literally has kind of like said, all right, you go ahead and share it. But um, it's talking about faith and talking about healing. <laughs> um, so about a month ago, maybe maybe a month and a half, you guys know what happened to Joseph that all the time, you know? We, we we get back to the house and um, and, um the girls were with us and Sister Harmon yeah uh, was at the house we were like riding their bikes or something that day and um and 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 we were gonna go somewhere to feed the animals or something like that and we left the house and Joseph stayed in the house and I, I, right after we left M Mandy called me and she's like man Joseph like he's he's in the floor right now like he said his heart his head is pounding I mean. Exactly, exactly the same way before he's gagging. He he says he can't. He feels like his head is gonna explode. And I was like, oh, really? Like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah, serious. I was like, we're well, we're about to do this, and we're gonna come back home. As soon as I get back home, I'm gonna take off. We're gonna go to the hospital, you know. So I believe that she prayed for him when she was at the house, and when we got back to the house, he was in the floor in the bathroom. Like, he's like, I can't, I can't do this. My head is gonna blow up, you know? I, so at, at that moment, you know, um, I, I, I believe that my faith kicked in. You know, I was like, I don't care if your head's falling off. Like, there's nothing wrong with you right now, bro. We're, we're about to go to the hospital and they're gonna tell us that there's nothing wrong with you and we're coming right back here. And, and I told Harmony and Abby and Linda, I say, right now, we're all gonna stay here and I talked to them about a couple of scriptures, and I said, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, that, that, that he'll be in the midst of that. And he said, where two or three, two, or, uh, uh, two touching agreements, that he will do just that. So we're going to pray right now. We set him right there, and we all prayed, like all together, and I took off to the hospital. And, 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 and war strategies. We preached war strategies, so I got a couple of those, you know. And I remember, even Brother Quentin, do you know one time he was preaching and he said that when, when something happens and the way that you act towards when that happened, that, that strengthens your faith. And that all the time when that happened, like, I don't know if I ever shared the full testimony, but we were like, I, I, it doesn't matter what's going on right now. I told Joseph, I said, Joseph, they, right now they said that you have three things in your head but there's nothing in your head the Lord already told me on Thursday and I tried calling you and I told you that the Lord said that there's nothing wrong with you you just have to go through this so that has strengthened my faith already so war strategies I get in the truck I said Mandy prayed we already prayed I'm about to hit up brother Jack real quick hey brother Jack this is going on right now we're on our way to the hospital you know would you join us in prayer and, and I remember one little thing that Brother Jack prayed that even lifted up my faith even higher. And he, as he was praying, he said, may this, whatever it is that's going on, may this thing uh, uh, be annihilated, go away and never come back. That's what he said. And I said, amen, never come back. And we're going to know, we're going to see if this is, time is going to tell if this is going to come back or not. So, um, Told, we keep driving to the hospital. He's like, his head is like, I'm talking about, even till the moment that I parked, he's like, I can't, I can't. My head is going to like, it's, uh, it feels like it's going to explode. And I was like, bro, there's nothing wrong with you right now. We go into the hospital, go in there, and the, the, the doctor comes and he starts checking them. And, and he starts doing like normal sign checks, not like putting them in the machine. And he starts checking. And, and as he's checking, like within like 15 minutes of him checking, he said, you know, there's, there's, he, he, there's nothing wrong with him. I said, what are you talking about? Like, so it, it, what I want to explain here is like inside of me, I'm like, all right, amen, you preach. There's nothing wrong with him. But then outside, also as being a dad and having knowledge of what happened before, I said, you're not going to come and just look at his eyes and press on his head and tell me there's nothing wrong. This, this happened before, and, and there was three tumors or, 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 or cysts in his head. Like, like you know, he's like, man, I know what I'm doing. If he has something wrong, he will be doing this. And he looked at his eyes and he pushed Joseph back, like, like lift him back up. And it, it all looked like, 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 and he's like, there's nothing wrong. I said, well, 
if there's nothing wrong, when you put him inside that machine, okay, and the machine shows nothing, then we're gonna walk out of here. Like fine, he's like, well, we, it's not good to put children all in there. I said, I, I understand. But this is not the first time that we're coming here. So back and forth, so I don't prolong this. Uh, we got to the point we called Mandy, I haven't explained to her, and we both agree. We said, we understand and we, we believe that, but we're, we're, we're gonna check. Called Brother Jack, I told him what was going on. He's like, that's smart, do that. And he, when they went in there, they came back. Joseph is already like within like 20 minutes of that. He's feeling a little better, you know. We had gave him some ibuprofen or something. I was like, man, when you have a, a, a tumor in your head, no ibuprofen is gonna make you feel better, you know? So um, uh, as soon as uh, the doctor walked out, I'm talking to him and he's like, man, I'm feeling a little better. And I was like, Joe, Joe, you're feeling a little better. And I don't care where anybody's faith is at. My faith is, is in that whatever, you didn't do that because you were playing around. You did that because something was happening in there. And whatever it was, we prayed for it. We, it went away. Mom prayed. We prayed. And when Brother Jack prayed, he said, it's never going to come back. And we're going we're gonna to stay with that. So we went over there. They took that. The doctor's kind of looking at us like, look, you guys came over here for nothing. This kid had nothing. I said, well, they, anybody can think whatever they want. I know how he was acting. I know what happened before. And God healed him. And, and I wanted to, I was like, that was like on a Monday or Tuesday, I think. It was on Tuesday. I was like, man, I'm coming to church. They've been testifying. How, I mean, I'm going to share that testimony. And, and it, I guess it wasn't time to share it. And, and God just sent me back there with my son. And I couldn't even barely can say amen to the word but today i promise you all that i didn't have any plan i didn't plan to make it sound all good and the lord just told me today is the time and it show how with the message how it was in the spirit of uh the the gifts of, of faith and all that and i believe that god gives you faith i believe that god uh, uh go, makes you go through something to strengthen your faith i believe that if you don't do what the word says your faith will get will weaken and it will, will, will. so i just wanted to share that with y'all and, and to to let you know that god is still healing we, we we stay with the word and 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 he'll do just what he said he would Amen. Thank the Lord for touching our brother Joseph and proving that he is a healer. Amen. God bless you, sis. Amen. I just want to give God uh, thanks for two things. One, I was out in my yard today doing, uh, cutting my grass. And, of course, we had 25% or more chance of rain. And it started to rain maybe about 30 minutes while I was out. And I was like, Lord, please, you know, hold up the rain so I can do my yard. And like that, the rain was gone. I was able to do my whole yard and, and then some. So I thank God for that. He's done it before. And I thank God that he did it again today. Um, also, I, I was praying for uh, my blood pressure, which I've had issues with my blood pressure. And I told my doctor, I'm like, I, I'm just not one to be dependent on medication. I don't want to be on this medicine for the rest of my life. So she was like, well, you know, I can help you get off. Well, I'm not going to first get totally on for her to help me get off. I take it. I, I try to monitor my pressure, and I take it when I need it. But I've seen low blood pressures that I haven't seen before, like 117 and stuff like that, when it's been 160 and 140. And I'm just believing God that he will regulate it. It's been kind of going up and down, but I'm just believing God for a total healing and a stable blood pressure. Yeah. Amen. We will stand in faith with you, sis. We certainly believe God. All right. God bless. Uh, it's a prayer request. Pretty much, uh, I know about seven months ago, I had uh, mentioned that uh, the door had opened for TSA. And it's been at least seven months now. And I've been, you know, working at my job as normal. But then all of a sudden, about two weeks ago, I get an email in my email from TSA telling us, yeah, uh, we wanted to know if you were still considering us after your application. And I'm like, okay. So I was, they were like, please respond. So I responded, yeah. They were like, tell us the best day and time to call you. I was like, okay. Uh, we're like, yes, I'm still interested. The best day and time to call me is on a Thursday or Friday when I ain't at work. Probably about a minute later, a dude called me, hello, you got time? I'm like, I said Tuesday, I said Thursday, but I make time. I go in the office. 
So I went in the office. He was like, uh, he told me all the particulars and stuff. So the interview is actually tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning. So I just solicited y'all prayers that, you know, not my will, his will be done. If it's for me, I just pray the right people are in the right places. And if it's not, we'll walk away from it and not be worried about it. Praise the Lord. And I will certainly remember our brother in prayer. Got another uh, request there. God bless you, church. Um, it's funny, Brother Josue said he was not planning on giving a testimony. And I, I just, after that, I just, I had to speak up today. Um, I usually work in Fort Pierce um, on Wednesdays. So I'm usually up there today. I had to go to two or three different cities to drop some things off from earlier this week. And it put me way behind. And just today, I just had a calm over me. And usually, I don't when things, you know, you, you, when you work on timing, when your time gets out of the way, and it's just like, it's not in your control. Um, uh, today, so on the way back, it was about, I want to say maybe 4.30, maybe 5 o'clock. On the way back, they give us a gas cart for my job. Um, I had about maybe less than a half a, t a quarter tank, maybe. And I went to go use the gas car. Now, the gas car worked a thousand times out of a thousand. Today, I get to the gas pump, swipe, don't work. Okay, maybe some steak. Try it again, don't work. Go inside, don't work. I was like, okay, well, God, I got to make it. <laughs> yeah, I can't be stuck in Fort Pierce. Everybody's going home. Nobody will be able to come get me. Um, everybody's probably went home maybe about 3, three o'clock, maybe 3.30. At this time, it's like 5.30. I drove from Fort Pierce all the way to Jupiter on literally on low-level gas, and I made it there. <laughs> and as I called, I called my supervisor. I was like, hey, I made, it to Fort, I made it to Jupiter. What do you want me to do? It's not working. So, and it's funny you say somebody handed you $100. Yesterday... My grandfather never does this, handed me $100 yesterday. That was the money I used to put in that truck to make it home from Jupiter. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so like I said, big or small, I just want to thank God, because like I say, I wouldn't even be here. I'd still be in Fort Pierce right now. I wouldn't even be in church. I usually, lately I've been, been doing great on time and going home, being able to change my clothes. I'm still in work clothes. I just want to thank God for being here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My, uh, another testimony right here, brother. <coughs> God bless you, saints. Um, what was it, uh, Friday? I believe it was Friday. Um, we were shooting a wedding, my wife and I. And um, the bride's mother was the officiant. So after we finished the ceremony, she, we uh, got the whole family, everybody together to take group photos. <clears throat> and the mother said, my sugar is dropping. And as she was standing there, she started getting weak and everything so me and a few of the guys ran over and grabbed to try and walk over to a chair and I, I believe they had one peppermint or something they were trying to give her and she couldn't even do nothing she was completely limp she just went and it was almost lifeless so we got her in the chair and everybody was trying to find something sweet for her and other people around her cursing and I was on one knee praying and then Within a few seconds, she came back up, and things began to change. So the bride was like, well, let's go finish our pictures, and everybody else took the mother and took her to the hospital. So mm. the Lord will put you right in the place yeah. at the right time Amen. so that he can work a work. Mm. I, I, I don't know who it may have affected, but it, it certainly increased my faith. Amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs> Sometimes we're the only Jesus that some people are going to see. So uh, thank God. Thank God for that. All right. Got another hand up here. Amen. Just a prayer request asking for prayer um, as I travel next week. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. We'll remember that in prayer. Uh, anybody else? 
Okay. All right. We got a hand over here, Sister Shonda. God bless everybody. I'll make it um, quick. Um, but um, I, I just thanking God for my job because uh, it's bringing out a lot of patience, temperance. <laughs> no, forgive my voice. I'm getting a horse. Um, but um, I was ready to quit two weeks ago, <laughs> and all of the the, the message that Brother Jack um, spoke a while back about you know not giving up and not quitting your job. I just began to um, thank God for my job. Um, and just looking at the situations of um, homes these days and the kids that's being bred and it's just a really, really um, terrible situation that this world is coming to. And um, thinking back on, God brought back um, Brother Troy's message about love. Mm. And then I think it was Monday, I was, I was listening to the prophet's message, love. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, Lord, so the problem, you know, he was talking about um, the hornet's nest and um, how he just had love for the hornets and he just went right back into the nest and the same thing with the bull. I just began to pray that God just give me love because I know it's not the kid's fault, it's just, you know, what the families and everybody is dealing with. Um, and pray that you just keep me in your prayers because it is very, very hard and I am on the verge of, I'm on the verge of something breaking. Mm. And just keep me in your prayers that um, God just, through these tests and trials, just bring out more love and patience um, for these kids. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Certainly. Keep you in prayer. Anybody else? We got, I got two more. I got three more. I got, I got, praise God. The whole church is testifying. <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, I'll make it very quick. Less than a minute. I just thought this would be encouragement to everyone. Uh, as Brother Jack said, uh, back in the day, uh, people would just feel led to just give uh, to, to each other in the church. Uh, I remember when I lost my job about a, just a bit over a year ago, and it was a sister in this church, uh, surprisingly came to me and decided to just give me something. Um, and that was such a big help to my family and I, and just wanted to share that. Uh, as Brother Jack mentioned, I just thought it was a good time. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I saw Sister Brittany and Sister Brown. God bless you, church. God bless you. Um, at work. I may not, that's the scripture that says we are written epistles read of all men, and I don't think, I know how I dress, but I see other people are noticing it too. And I have been, several of the, I work at a hospital, and several of the, one of the clergymen, he came up to me, he said, you know, the way you dress, he said, I can tell you a Christian. And he says, I'm gonna need you to go around to the hospital and tell these employees how to dress. <laughs> And I said, uh, okay. Um, and I, it was this one lady, another coworker. Um, she works on a different floor and she was coming up to me and she was talking and she almost cursed and she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I know you different, I know you a Christian. I need to watch how I talk around you. And there are a lot of people who tell me that there was like, there is something different about you. You don't talk and walk and act like these people here at the hospital, there's a light and I want to just thank God and, and I want that light to continue to shine because in a place where there is darkness and I see sick people, I see people dying all the time. People always come to me and say, can you help me? Can you pray for me? And, and again, people have to watch the way they talk around me. They can't talk any kind of way because they sense that and they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I slipped up and I may have cursed around you. I apologize. Please forgive me. So I just want to thank God for that and just continue to let my light shine where I work. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister Brown there. Thank God. I just want to give God praise that today I, I missed a real bad ex accident. And uh, a car actually just, <laughs> I'm driving along and a car just flew out in front of me, crossing over in front of me, trying to get to 95. I was on North Lake. And when I hit my brakes, they scrubbed so hard. I mean, I came so close to that car 
And I'm just so grateful and thanking God that I said, look, I don't have time for no accident now. <laughs> I'm going to get my food. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I truly thank God for his grace. Amen. Thank God for watching over our sister. That's, that's, that's one of the moments that all you can say is Jesus. And uh, he's just right there to, to make sure things are, are handled appropriately. We thank God. All right. Okay. Well, let's um, have a word of prayer. Amen. As we just prepare to uh, dismiss tonight. Uh, Father, we just thank you for your word that has come to us. Uh, we just appreciate, Father, this, uh, this journey through the gifts. And Lord, just uh, how you just place this in Brother Quentin's heart. We know this is all part of the restoration and um, 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 that the prophet actually taught us about. So just hearing how you're just leading him through, you know, some of this is a real blessing uh, to the church. And Father, I just pray that uh, you would just continue to anoint him and, 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 and use him for your glory. God, we have um, a number of testimonies that have come here tonight and just how you have proven yourself. Uh, you you touch uh, Brother Joseph and God, you even prove through the doctor's reports that uh, what was spoke by faith became reality in his life. So we thank you for manifesting yourself, Lord, uh, on his behalf. And uh, thank you for providing for uh, uh, Brother um, Marquise, as well as uh, we heard the testimony you, pro you provided for Brother Jerry. Uh, we just thank you for, for moving in that way. Uh, God, we also uh, thank you, Lord, for touching uh, Sister Virginia and her body. And God, we, we join her in faith, believing that this will stabilize and that she won't have to be, uh, Lord, worried about the medication. Thank you for being with Sister Brittany and giving her conviction that when nobody else is looking, she's still living a life that is pleasing in thy sight, that others would notice, oh God, that uh, she is a Christian. May her light continue to shine. Uh, in the midst of that environment and Lord we uh, we ask that you would also look upon uh, brother Garen he has uh, an opportunity and uh, he's just leave, staying open that if this is your will everything will work out perfectly fine the hours will be just right there will be no uh, having to uh, miss church or anything like that because of it but Lord everything will just work out fine so I pray that you would go before him and that you God would just direct the conversation uh, as he enters into it our precious sister Michelle will be traveling we pray that you would be with her God watch over and keep her and just bring her back Lord uh, when uh, she returns and uh, I know that also sister Tina and, and sister Cobb be traveling give them traveling mercies as well and uh, uh, just pray, Father, you just continue to watch over uh, your people. May And we thank you for watching over Sister Brown. Uh, it could have been a really, really bad accident, but God, you, you kept her. Thank you for uh, being with Sister Shonda there on her job. You've opened up this door, and, and it's the devil's job to try to drive us off of our mountain. But we're going to stay right there, amen, until you say otherwise. So, God, I, I pray your blessings upon each and every one. Thank you for all that came out to the house of the Lord as we leave this place, but not your presence. Give us traveling mercies those that have streamed we thank you for them joining but god i agree with brother quentin uh the gifts it's hard to depend on a gift over a stream uh, the gifts have to be in the church lord so we pray that you'd open up a door for the people to be able to be in fellowship and God, may the glory of God just continue to be manifest in our midst. Keep us until we're able to come back together again on Sunday morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you.